In this lecture, we are going to talk about advanced CNN. From last lecture, now we can understand what is convolution and what is pooling, and then we can connect them together with the multiple convolution layers, and then finally we can connect it with the fully connected layers. So, for a given image, it's natural that we can use a filter and then try to extract some output. But however, we can use different size of filters, one by one, three by three, five by five, for example, like this. So which one we have to use for a given image? This is really a big question mark. So the idea of inception is quite simple. Why we not try all possible or some of possible combinations? So for example, here we're gonna use five five filter, three by three, and one by one. And then basically we're gonna concatenate them all together. But if you look at a little bit closely, we are using one by one convolution first in here, and then we're gonna connect them to five, five, three, three, and so on here with average pooling. So this is very interesting in some sense why we are using one by one convolution in here. What is this one by one convolution? Suppose we have an image with a fifty-six by fifty-six and then the depth of this image is 64. So we want to apply this one by one convolution on this image. What will be the output? So obviously this is one by one, output size of the image or activation map is just the 56, 56. It's not changed. But however, because this is basically dot product operation, each convolution operation will generate just the one number. And then we just go over entire this image. So the channel output is going to be 1 because if we are using only one one by one composition. So this is exactly the goal of using one by one composition. So using this one by one, we can decide the channels, our channels. So for example, here we want to use 32 filters one by one, then we're going to produce going to produce the exactly same size at the original input, but this channel or depth can be decided by number of filters you are using. So by reducing these depths, we can significantly save our computations. For example, let's say we will have image 28 by 20 with 192 in channels. And then by applying some convolutions, we want to make 32 channels with the same size of image. So here we're going to apply this 5 by 5 kernel and then with some padding so we can generate the same size. So here how many uh, kernels do you need? So we need basically 32 kernels size of 5 by 5 and then we can apply convolutions and can generate this image. But on the other hand we can use this one by one convolution. So for given this image we can create the same size but with a different depth. So here out channel size is 16. So we're gonna use 16 of this one by one kernel and can generate this feature map. And then we're gonna apply another convolution, which is five by five, and then we want to generate exactly the same size of feature map. So we're gonna apply this one 32 with 32 kernels. But this sounds like a little bit inefficient because we are applying this convolution twice. But however, if we can really compare number of operations we need to generate this the same size of feature maps, it's going to be very interesting. So for example here, how many operations do you need? Basically, we can compute with this 5 because it's 5 square and then the input is 28 square and then we have this much in channel and this much out channel. This is how we're going to compute. So it's roughly 120 million operations. But how about this? You can try to compute this one. And if you compute this one, it's really surprising. So because this one is one by one, just one, and then 28, and then 192 channel times 16. This is how much, how many operations we need. And then we do have a second one, plus five square, 28 square, and this input is 16, output 32, so 16 by 32. And surprisingly, this requires only 12 million operations. If you compare these two, this is really small. So this is one of the reasons that why we are using this 
one by one composition before we apply other compositions. Let's try to implement this. So uh, this is our input. And then we're going to apply various sides of the convolutions and then eventually we're going to concatenate all the output. So let's go one by one here. So this looks really simple, only one convolution. So let's try to implement this. How are we going to do this? So we're going to use this COM2D and the input channels are given. So it's some input channels and then the output channel is 16. So we're going to use 16. And then what's the kernel size? Kernel size is obviously 1. And then for a given input, we're going to pass through into this uh, come to the And that's it. And how about that? That sounds also very, very easy. So what we need to do is that first of all, we're going to define these elements near come to the And the input is given, so output is 24. And then the kernel size is obviously 1. Then average pooling is this function. So we put the input in here and then kernel size 3 and then we put the stride and the padding to generate the right size of the input and then we pass just the input to here. And how about this? It's just the two layers. We can just follow exactly the uh, same uh, procedure. So here, the, once again, in channels are given. So we're going to produce 16 and the kernel size is 1. And then we're going to define these elements. This inside is 16 because these two numbers should be equal. And then the out channel size is 24. What is the size of a kernel? It is defined 5 by 5. So we're going to use 5. And the fading is here too to generate the same size of image. And then for input, we're going to put here. And then this output, we're going to put here again to generate this. And lastly, this has three. It sounds like a little bit complicated, but we can just follow exactly the same idea. So we can define three different components in and out, and then size is exactly the same as that. And then padding, just we want to generate the same size of image of padding is one here. And then 16 is input, 24 to go to 24. This is final. And then X, we just push one by one here, and then eventually we got this. And finally, if you get all this result, what we're going to do is that just to do concatenations. It's like a list in the Python. And that's it. This will be our final output. So even though this network sounds a little bit complicated, our implementation, if you just do one by one, it's quite simple and very intuitive. Let's look at our entire module. So this is our inception. And this is a very common practice that once we have very complicated uh, models, we want to make small subsets as a separate class. And each one has initialized, and then each one has forward. So here, it just connected all inceptions. And in our main module, we are just using them as one of the components in here. So we have convolutionals and the max pooling linear and then also we have inceptions and in forward we just uh, connect them all together so for a given input we first pass to convolutional and then this output will be finally we're gonna flat this output and then feed to fully connected layer and then we return with the log softmax now we can train our model using this main network so using exactly the same loss functions and same forward, backward, and update training cycle. And then as you probably can see, this loss is going down. And then surprisingly, we are going to have very high accuracy, 99%. And then as an exercise, we just implemented this very small, but we can implement the full inception version number 3 and version number 4. So. It's very obvious that if you have more layers, it's, it's getting better result. So can you just go deeper and deeper and way, way down? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Based on the experiments on the data set called the CIFAR 10, so they use the different size of uh, layers, 56 layer and 20 layer. This is iterations and this is error. So surprisingly, 
if you are using 56 layers, the error in training error is higher. Not only training, but also test error is higher than just the 20 layer. So he also tried with other data set like ImageNet, and then it has a very similar result. 34 layer and 18 layer, 18 layers works better than 34 layers. Why this happens? Basically, once we have a deep layer, like more than 50 layers, the vanishing gradient problems happens again. So our backpropagation does not work very well in this case. So one of the solutions is using deep residual learning. So this is our plain network. Basically, it's connected to multiple layers like a stack. However, in proposed residual learning, what we do have is that residual connection, which is sort of bypassing this, and then we add these two values, and then use this one as next input. In very deep layer, the flame net looks like just this. We're just stacking all the layers. But however, in ResNet, they have uh, bypassing connections like that. And then basically, this can help to propagate all the gradients so that it can train much, much better. In order to implement this, we can have a various size of kernels inside. But one limitation here is that because we're going to add on these two values, so the size of the input here, let's call this an x, and this one, let's say this one is fx. So the size should be exactly the same. This is one limitation. So when you design inside the kernels, we have to be very careful. Also, we can make one by one, three by three, and another one by one. So often this one by one is called as a bottling layer, which can reduce the number of operations significantly. Also, the original author coming here actually uh, tried many, many different uh, models and really admire him because he really tried a lot. And then eventually it was a successful. So in year 2015, he actually won all five main tracks of competition, ImageNet, ImageNet detection, and then using this model, he won everything. So as an exercise, we can implement this ResNet, so you can get a lot of help from internet. Also, we do have many other interesting networks, like including DenseNet. So basically, as all the output of previous layers, we can add them together, and then we can have much better result. So we can try to implement DenseNet as an exercise. In our next lecture, we finally going to talk about a very interesting neural net called RNN.